live out to Facebook, going live out to YouTube as well. Let me turn that down just a little bit. Hey, M0A and Nation. Jason here getting everything kind of all set up uh, over on our end, live on Facebook. Let me get comments pulled up over here so I can see that. Facebook, I can see that. Hey, Gary Wheeler, great to see you uh, over there as well as everybody's hopping on. Um, I can see um, all that. We're having a few little internet issues. I mean, internet's kind of slow wherever you go, so hopefully that's all working. But anyways, sitting down while everybody is kind of stuck at home and working to take your questions is what we'll be doing a little bit of today. I am joined by Amanda, who heads up all of our social media. This was all Amanda's crazy idea, by the way. So all these crazy questions, especially the first one, it's <laughs> thanks to Amanda. Um, the m 0 office dad, Wayne, that's you, Wayne. <laughs> Wayne's making the magic happen. He's hitting all sorts of crazy buttons over there. Sorry, John. Uh, yeah, John, <laughs> Wayne is apologizing in advance. Of course, most of our team is working remote here uh, today. We can uh, send over that remote team. There's Sarah. Where's Matt? We lost Matt. What happened to Matt? He was on there. There's Matt for a second. Um, Russ as uh, as well, so he's he's somewhere. We'll we'll bring him in um, in a little bit here. Are you guys getting YouTube by the way? Uh, it's not looking like it's working on mine. If you guys can double check that, since we have a good connection, I just can't see a. Uh, uh, a live stream of it. There's nothing happening in the chat. I was gonna say we're getting good comments on Facebook. Um, that I can see. Let me pop out the chat here just to see. Um, okay. I can see the chat now. Everybody good on YouTube? Everybody have us? Uh, YouTube was saying my uh, uh, Wi-Fi was being a little bit slow um, with that. Hey, Barry over on YouTube. Hey, Tommy over there as well. Sean, great to see you. Let's head over to Facebook. Uh, say hello as well. Hey, James Fellows, great to see you. Hey, Mike, fantastic to see you uh, over on uh, Facebook as well. Let's see, let me find my YouTube chat uh, as well. Make sure everybody has uh, got us loud and clear. You can confirm YouTube's up and running or no? Uh, I'm on Facebook currently. And you can check that. YouTube yep. audience, um, if you guys are good, no, someone says we're squawking 7600, so that's possible they don't have us just yet. It just says a good connection. Um, I, don't, uh, I don't see an... Um, what the issue it just says the stream's current bit rate is lower than the recommended bit rate. Um, so I don't know. It says we just have a good connection. Our internet was acting up. There's just so many people bogging down uh, the internet. It's making it quite uh, difficult here with that. So we'll see if we can get YouTube up and running or if one of you can look into that and see. Hey, Kira, uh, great to see you. Chris Lusher, great to see you. Um, we're working on video for YouTube, and then we'll kind of get started uh, chatting with uh, with that. Wayne, if you can switch the angle back, thank you. Um, from that, um, let's see. So watching all those, I don't, don't quite know what to do to get YouTube up and running here. Um, it says it's waiting on us, but I don't see anything that I can do to fix it. Uh, stream status, good. Stream status, it just moved to excellent. Let's see if that fixes anything on ours. Did you do something over on your end? Or no? Everything's clicked and it's streaming. Okay, let's um, work on that and see what happens. But Facebook, we will be taking your questions here in just a bit while we try to get the YouTube folks um, up and running. I'm going to uh, end the YouTube stream and try to restart it and see if that will work. Um, I think that may not. Um, no. I'm gonna have to send you a new stream key probably for YouTube, but that might screw everything up. Maybe we just stick with Facebook and just roll with that and try to encourage the YouTube people to head over to Facebook if you wanna post that in the chats okay. for me. I'm sorry, uh, YouTube. Um, but um, that's not going to work for some reason. So anyways, let's head over. Um, let me see. Um, hey, Chris, great to see you. Thanks for coming on there. Tyler, um, 
Yeah, Tyler, I figured that was the case. Uh, Tyler has a fantastic dealership in the Kentucky area. Tyler, most of us are remote. Uh, we just came in the studio today just to do this with you guys um, and, uh, and work and all that. But we will just stick live on Facebook. Amanda, I'll let you pivot and get YouTube over to Facebook for me if you don't mind. Right. And we'll kind of go from there. Say hi to the M08 remote team. Matt in the top right-hand corner. Sarah in the bottom right. Somehow I ended up on there as well. Hi. And of course, Amanda's in the top right. We Everyone wants to see Russ, though. So we got somebody got to get Russ uh, involved in all of this uh, here as well. Wayne, if you want to work on uh, getting him to uh, to uh, drop in, thanks Office Dad. As, as if you don't have enough. <laughs> we'll take care of it. As if you don't have enough to do over there today. Um, the purpose of today and really this week is I realize so many of you are uh, just stuck at home, um, working remotely. Many of you, like Tyler, have uh, you know closed your businesses or businesses have been closed. Um, we want to certainly just bring some uh, some positive vibes to you, no doubt. Some great aviation content and share a little bit about what's happening and then answer some fun questions too. So Amanda, you have lots of fun questions, but can we start with perhaps a more serious question and then we can dive into the fun questions here um, as well. Absolutely. So one of the main questions that came in today was, um, will the FAA grant an extension for those who have a Part 107 that is expiring this month or early next month since all of the PSI testing locations sure. are closed down? That's a fantastic question. So um, as of Sunday, uh, PSI announced that all of their testing centers are going to be closed, which uh, means no written tests or anything like that. Now. I realize we have a, a large population of uh, our, our drone audience as well as our manned, so we have manned and unmanned audiences. This applies to both. Think about it this way. In manned aviation, I'm a flight instructor. What if I had a FERC, a flight instructor uh, refresher course that was actually coming up? I would need to, what if I had a FERC schedule, I was going somewhere, what if I needed to submit that FERC paperwork? All of those things. What if I have check rides coming up? I waited to the last minute. Examiners can't do things. Uh, what if I'm going to expire using the drones as the example? They've got a part 107 recurrent test they're required to do every 24 calendar months. What is going to happen? I don't know exactly what's going to happen, but I have some theories as to what I believe is going to actually happen. What I think will happen is there's going to have to be some grace period. We're going to have to get a one or two months worth of a grace period and kind of work from that standpoint um, and, and then simply just go from there. Obviously, drone operators, we shouldn't be crazy. We shouldn't be doing anything outside of rules, regulations, operating still within Part 107. By Part 61, guys, we should still be operating within Part 61. But there's going to be some sort of grace period with the PSI testing centers being closed. Now, here's the next crazy thing. PSI testing centers are closed. It's already hard enough to get a written test book these days. They're all done online. Um, you know, book, that booking is now done online. You want to be the first to kind of get these written tests booked and scheduled. So when you do get them booked, um, you can go through and, uh, and make all of that happen. That's just my two cents with that. But you're going to want to make sure you're on the docket to get those scheduled. My professional opinion is I believe there will be a little bit of a grace period. Um, with that, uh, but that has not been confirmed yet by uh, the FAA. And by the way, too, uh, since we're live on Facebook, Facebook, you have any comments you uh, wish or any questions you want to ask, ask them away um, in the comments, and we will be more than happy to help out. Like Hudson just asked, does the Part 107 recurrent apply to private pod as well, or is a BFR? Um, phenomenal question. Let's let's break that apart a little bit here, Hudson. So you're saying you are a Part 61 certificated pilot. That you are current me and I have a medical I've done my flight review I took the online test to earn my part 107 drone certificate I believe that's what we're talking about now you need to do the recurrent you don't need to actually go to a PSI testing center Hudson all you need to do is um, simply take the recurrent version of that test on fasafe.gov again uh, and you'll take that and print that out and that's how you'll end up renewing Hudson um, uh, with that so 
So that is that. By the way, he said his PSI test center was open today, took the part 107, uh, and the flight school is remaining open. So super. I, I read this morning that every PSI testing center was closing. So you might have been the last one to uh, to sneak that one in here. Amanda, I'll let you kind of keep watching these comments uh, as well. Jimmy, great to see you. Nathaniel, top fan, great to see you. Marco, great to see you. I'll take Marco's question if you want to team me up for the next question, Amanda. Marco's okay. question is, Jason, do you think rates for CFI and plane rentals will go down um no i don't think they're going to go down um i think flight schools i think with the way so remember we've got this russian saudi fight right now that is pushing oil prices down however inventory is still there oil price wise i think the price eventually of 100 low lead will come down and instead i think flight schools will enjoy that higher profit margin rather than passing it on to their students um it's unfortunate but i believe that's how that game is going to be played a benefit to this and, and by the way I'm not trying to make light of this entire situation when I say this, but I just, I have a little bit of a different mindset. I believe that in every adversity, there is a seed of a greater or at least an equivalent advantage. Uh, that's just my professional opinion. That is not making light of the situation. It is a very uh, serious situation out there uh, and growing ever more in the United States, but I believe the, the smart individuals out there asking themselves right now, where is the opportunity in this? And it doesn't have to be in aviation. It could be in the stock market. It could be in anything. There's plenty of opportunities out there. Um, so a roundabout way to answer your question, Marco, is I believe now there are a lot of very, very talented flight instructors who are hungry. There are many flight instructors who were in a hiring pool for Delta or United or whoever it was, and their, their class date just got pushed back or canceled until further notice. These are some amazing flight instructors. They meet and exceed ATP minimums, and they now have to pay their rent. And they're the ones that might be willing to cut some deals and work with you where you can save a ton of money. Be asking yourself right now, where is the equivalent or greater advantage to this adversity? And I believe that's the attitude that sets you up for success with that. Sorry to, uh, to ramble on that one. That's something I'm passionate about. Amanda, what else was asked All by right. the universe? William asked if you could talk about ADSB, where and when is it required, when is it not required, and is it asked during the FAA exams about ADSB? Uh, is this a, you think they're asking this from a drone perspective or a manned aviation perspective? I believe it's a could... manned aviation. Okay. So we know, and I'll, I'll touch on it lightly for drones because there will be ADSB in drones. There is already actually. Um, but anyways, let's talk about it from a manned aviation standpoint. Obviously, January 1st, 2020, ADSB came into effect. You need to know that for a check ride. ADSB is now required. Now, ADSB is technically only required if you wish to fly IFR within a mode C veil. Think of it as like having mode C. It's just amplified mode C in a way. That being said, I wouldn't buy an airplane that doesn't have ADS-B just yet, though. It's, a, it's an expensive, relatively expensive little upgrade. Um, there's two types of ADS-B. There's ADS-B in and ADS-B out. When you're looking to buy an airplane, I'm getting on a tangent now, and I apologize, but when you're looking to buy an airplane, a lot of owners have just done ADS-B out, which is great. They check the box, and they're legal. However, they are only broadcasting their signal out they are not receiving a signal back. So they are not receiving the same ADSB weather, the same ADSB traffic. They are helping to populate the system, yet they are not benefiting directly from that system. You could buy a Stratus or something like that too and still benefit from the system, but having true ADSB in and out in your aircraft um, is the best and the correct way to go about it. The, the long part of that question was, is this gonna be on a check ride? I believe the only thing on the check ride is going to be we have ADSB because of January 1st, 2020, it's now mandated, uh, is my professional opinion of that. Neil, great to see you uh, on here from Ireland as well. Actually, I saw you doing some traveling, uh, Neil, as well, but great to see you uh, all the way from Ireland. Super, Amanda? Okay, so something that came in quite a few times this morning was, what does members only mean from the email that was sent this morning, and sure. how do I become a member? Sure, I appreciate that. 
So you all know M0A.com is more than uh, just some great YouTube videos and live streams, although we are very blessed and that is um, really that's one of our great ways to continue to give back to the um, to the community, both on RemotePot 101 and M0A.com. It's, uh, it's one of our missions is to create safer, smarter pilots every single day. But we also realize that um, you want to pass your test with flying colors and you want to be safe, real world pilots. So on M0A.com, we have a members only online ground school. Uh, prices range, if you want to be in the ground school, from $97 to $147 a month. There are memberships as little as $27 a month called the Pilots Inner Circle. And we do now, we do two webinars, a VFR and an IFR webinar every single week. Every Tuesday from 2 to 4 p.m., we are live, we're right over there on the hangar set um, and we are live and um Gosh, this week for the VFR webinar, I am talking about my engine failure on takeoff in 512 Romeo. And then for the IFR webinar, I'm talking about a flight um, into um, Farmingdale. Uh, actually, Chris, I know you're watching this. Uh, into Farmingdale just a few years ago um, that ran out of fuel, shooting like the six instrument approach. And by the way, it was his first time in actual conditions. So just something else to think about um, there. By the way, I lost um, internet on my computer. I don't know if anybody else is having internet issues. Maybe it's just my computer. That'll be a-okay. But my comments aren't updated anymore. But as long as we're still streaming um, and you show everything is still good on your end, that's super. My computer just hopped off the internet and decided to hop back on now. So all good. Um, but yeah, so that's what we're sharing there. So you can learn more about that by going to groundschoolacademy.com to check that and learn more. And actually, if you want real, uh, if you want to just check it out, go to m0a trial. Dot com. Is that a safe URL? Send everybody mm -hmm. to Amanda. M0A trial, uh, dot com. Send that to them uh, or, or uh, hop on there. And uh, Chris or Amanda, if you can post that in the, in the chats, or actually, I'm not online yet, so maybe you can do it. M0A trial, uh, dot com, And uh, you can just take a two week free trial. We'd love to have you on the webinar tomorrow, 2 p.m. Eastern Time, uh, going until 4 p.m. Eastern Time with all that great content. Check it out for two weeks. It gives you access to two webinars. So um, that is that. Oh, I'm back on comments. Oh, hey, Holly. Holly is one of our phenomenal members slash alumni, super member. She said, with the Pilots Center Circle, can you watch the webinars? That know? Yes, Holly. So if you ever, um, the goal of the Pilots Center Circle is, you've been, and, and Holly, you're perfect for this. You've been paying so much. You've been paying 147 bucks a month, going gold, gold, gold. We are so blessed. We are so thankful. You feed. We are at 25, 26 team members now uh, that you put food on the table for. What a blessing that is uh, to us here as the uh, M0A.com team. Instead of canceling, though, you can downgrade to the Pilots Center Circle for 27 bucks a month, which gives you some uh, additional exclusive content. Uh, you don't get access to the ground school, but you get most importantly get access to those webinars and those webinar recordings so that is that chris thanks for posting that uh, uh trial there as well i believe that's correct trial maybe test that link out. i thought it was the msra spelled out msra trial.com but test and see if not we'll figure it out somebody said go nebraska that's rich rich you were right go nebraska <laughs> go corn huskers is that what they gators. are uh, wayne go. is wayne are you wearing a gator shirt today no i'm neutral i, I am uh, i am neutral with all that, but uh, go uh, Cornhuskers. I think that's what they are. Um, or is that Iowa? I can't remember. R R you know, Rich is going to be mad at me here in a I'm second. Lost. We'll find out I was going to say. We'll no one knows what Nebraska is. This I is apologize. not good. Okay. Okay. Uh, remote pilot question. Uh, can you explain the course? What's the difference between the full course and the recurrent? And then uh, do you teach about mapping with drones? Two great questions. Um, Remote Pilot 101 is your one-stop shop for everything Part 107. I know you're there to pass your test, and that is my ultimate goal, is to get you through that test as successfully as possible. However, I have a twist to all that. My goal is to make you as safe of a real-world pilot as possible. That is my goal through and through. I want you safe. Um, 
<laughs> in all the jobs you have. Once you get hired, I want you to be the best master pilot that you can be is what we're pursuing. Um, the Robot 101 is broken into an initial course. Um, really, there's the full course and there's the recurrent course is how the pricing works. The full course gives you access for life to the initial and the recurrent, and then um, the recurrent gives you access just to the recurrent. You must take the recurrent test uh, every 24 calendar months after you take your initial. Similar to manned aviation, where we have a flight review. Um, you must also do, it's just a written test, um, as well with a recurrent test, but it's a totally separate written test. Manned pilots, imagine that. Imagine if we did, had to do um, a, another written test as well. That's what the drone pilots have to do. So uh, some pretty cool stuff there. All right. Oh, and the other question, sorry. Do we offer anything with mapping? Um, not yet with mapping. We have partnered with a fantastic company called Drone Deploy, and Drone Deploy is truly the market leader in all things mapping. We were, I was actually at the Drone Deploy conference, and they're showing something amazing. It's gonna sound crazy, but they, they showed just this huge mound of dirt, like fill dirt. And they kind of made everybody guess how much, how, how many, you know, square feet, uh, or how much this weighs, or whatever, whatever you need to figure out. How much square footage of fill dirt is this? And well, we'd have to survey, we'd have to do this, we'd have to measure, we'd have to know the consistency of the fill, all these things. They put in the type of the fill. They flew the drone around the fill, the pile of fill dirt, mapped out the entire thing and said, this is 7,000 square feet of fill at this depth, and just knew within a matter of about 60 to 90 seconds. It was pretty cool, the stuff that Drone Deploy can do, and those are some videos that we want to be working on in the near future. Actually trying to get, obviously there's a lot of travel restrictions, especially for Drone Deploy. They're out of the San Francisco uh, Bay Area, but uh, our goal most certainly is to start um, getting them here in studio and doing some videos uh, with them in that regard. So some cool things. All right. Uh, so one question that came in multiple times over the last several weeks is what kind of pranks happen in the office and how often? Well, I'm sorry, office dad, you want to sit here and answer this one personally? Or? I don't trust you. <laughs> he, he is the victim of all our pranks. So uh, <laughs> How did I know that was coming? <laughs> How did I know that was coming? That was good, Office Dad. I appreciate that. Where are you hiding that? Oh. Yeah, exactly. Um, we have lots of pranks here at M0A.com. It's funny because everyone sees uh, these beautiful, polished, perfect videos we put out on M0A.com and RoboPilot101.com. They don't realize we have a lot of fun um, in, in making those videos. So some of the pranks that happen. First off, Wayne is the m office dad. So he is the butt end of uh, most of those pranks. In fact, if you'd like to go on Instagram and search m 0 office dad, you can see uh, uh, all of the fantastic pranks that we do to Wayne. Pranks consist of using the air horn. Uh, <laughs> often, <laughs> it's gonna run out eventually. <laughs> I don't know what you're gonna do. I have to go back to Amazon. Um, using the air, the air horn. A popular one recently has been, uh, everyone purchased their own, it's called fart spray. <laughs> And they like to spray it in each other's offices and then run away. But what they do is they, they trail it out with them and then the whole office smells. We all like have to cram into one little space because the office smells so bad. Hold on, um, be right back. Exactly, yeah. There is no smell of vision yet on, on live. So um, Wayne took it so far as to one day I was hiding in my office because I pranked Wayne really, really good. I can't quite remember. Oh, well, well I, my typical prank that I do is when Wayne leaves his computer open, I go over to his Facebook and I post embarrassing things on his Facebook status. Just sweet little things like to his wife and stuff like uh, love you boo boo and that sort of stuff. She doesn't find it as humorous or romantic as I think she should. <laughs> Um, and Wayne gets in trouble. So uh, he retaliates, usually with fart spray. So one day I locked myself in my office because I knew the retaliation was coming once he realized all the Facebook likes and comments he got on his love you boo boo post. Um, <laughs> he drilled a hole through my door and proceeded to send fart spray through the door that way. So that was, um, that was exciting. We have a lot of fun here. We do get a lot of work done, but we certainly have a lot of, uh, a lot of fun at, uh, at m0a.com. So. We, uh, we enjoy that. We actually have a lot of security camera footage that Matt, you need to uh, get to Amanda so she can edit some of those up to, uh, to turn into a clip. There's actually one, did we ever get Russ? Is Russ, uh, did we ever find Russ? Did anybody get him? No, there, Russ is there. Hold on one second, let me get my headphones in. We gotta talk to Russ. Can we? 
Russ, speak up. So Russ is frozen right now. Yep. Uh, let's he's see. talking. He has he's his mic muted. Oh, Russ, your mic's muted. <laughs> he's fixing it. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> Are we able to get audio from them yet, or do you need me to just... Yeah, I'll just do this real quick. This is fine. Hold on one second. Okay, Russ, are you there? It's still muted. It's still, still muted. Russ, hit the mute, unmute button. Don't worry, he works on our airplanes, guys. How bad could it be? You know? I mean, jeez. Can I unmute him? It says, I can't unmute this for... You can't unmute someone else, it says. Russ has to unmute himself. I just want Russ to tell his story of um, when he was um, crawling like a commando to spray the fart spray at Wayne. All right, well. I can't wait to share those video clips with everyone. Yeah, that, that's that's going to be good. We'll, we'll come back um, to all that. I'll turn that down. Wait, Russ is still still on mute. Russ, I want you to, as soon as you figure out, it's the, the microphone looking button with the X through it. Try that one. See if that one works, Russ. Let me know. <laughs> Russ is available for annual inspections. Uh, any maintenance you need, this is your, oh, hey, Russ, I was just talking about you. I mean, I'm, okay, Russ. I'm still getting an echo from, um, is it myself here and myself back? I was going to say the answer to you because I'm muted. It's Wayne. Go figure. Oh. Okay, Russ, all you. I need you to tell the story of when you had to crawl like, a, like yeah, you're good now. We got you. I was just talking I about how great. Oh, hold on. I got to unmute myself at least. There we go. Okay. Russ, I was just telling the story about what a great mechanic you are um, and how phenomenal you are. Um, it was really, I was really talking you up quite well, and I need you to tell the story. <laughs> I need you to tell the story right. of when you had to crawl commando and fart spray underneath Wayne's desk. Oh, are you talking about when the, the day that the military came in and they were trying to uh, get to Wayne? <laughs> Wayne was looking at his computer, couldn't see past anything. So all he could see his computer because he's got a one-track mind. So I did a low crawl over to his desk by his feet sprayed the fart spray by his feet and then I backed out. Matt saw the whole thing, didn't say anything, we just started laughing and all of a sudden you hear uh, Wayne going off because of, he could smell the fart spray. He wasn't happy. There is security camera footage of this and Matt, if you can please make sure that Amanda gets it, as Michael Scott would say, ASAP as possible. <laughs> because <laughs> it's just it's that important to show. It's that important to show. Thank you, Russ, for that. You know, we got we got to share with Wayne like that. You know, we have to share. You know, exactly. sharing is caring. Sharing is caring. Well, super, Russ. Thank you for sharing the story, Amanda. More questions or anything else happening? Yes. Well, uh, Wayne's uh, new name is Grandpa Wayne instead oh. of Office. Dad. Who gets credit for that? I want to make sure. I want to make sure somebody gets appropriate credit wow. for that. I believe that was your dad. That was my dad. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. I don't see him on here. Are you sure he's on here? I'm sure. Oh, I mean, I'm, if Jerry is... Yeah, Jerry Shaffer, that's my dad. Yeah. Uh, go ahead and add my dad on Facebook, too. He would love it. <laughs> um, Grandpa Wayne, office dad. All right, what is okay. next? So we do have a question. Uh, what are your thoughts on general aviation flying under the current conditions? Uh, it's been a much debated question for pilots in my area. I can tell you I'm supposed to fly tomorrow, and I'm going to be bringing Clorox wipes with me, and I'm going to wipe down every little surface in that airplane. Maybe give it a Lysol bomb while I, um, while I pre-flight the exterior um, in the meantime. It, it is a debated topic, and um, we are in some very strange, unprecedented times, no doubt, um, with this. But... Um, I know many, I would say about half of the flight schools I know have actually closed their doors. Uh, just because you're exactly right, you're in a very tiny environment with somebody, very small environment. And, um, you know, there's a possibility for a transmission of this, uh, of this virus. So um, I am flying tomorrow. I'm flying by myself, though, but I'm flying an aircraft that is not mine. Uh, so you better believe I am going to... Um, sanitize that thing as a part of my pre-flight inspection to uh, uh, to start with uh, with that so um, all right someone said to have Russ mute his speakers apparently they can hear his music oh <laughs> <laughs> he's come back over <laughs> Russ is muted that might have been on delay okay I think we're good now Russ don't worry 
<laughs> I th they were hearing your music. They were, was that Kenny G you were playing in the background? Is that what you do maintenance to, Kenny G? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So any anyways, Russ is listening to Kenny G over there and turning wrenches. All right. Um, Chris saying some schools in Tulsa have shut down their operations as well. Um, interesting. Clayton said um, uh, Garmin has some guidance on disinfecting without damaging the avionics. That's super cool. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not aware of that, but I will be <laughs> using some of that tomorrow. Paul wants us to create an Office Pranks YouTube series. I believe that is high on Amanda's priority list. Yes. Um, much to Wayne's dismay because he is usually the butt of most of these pranks. Butt was a proper pun, too, for the fart oh, spray. Wow. Did you get it? <laughs> Um, let's see. Oh, Holly said the boss is coming, so she has to come back. Um, I have another question from a remote pilot who asked if they are allowed to fly right now. This is a great question, too. Are we allowed to fly right now? Yes. Unless airspace has changed. So let's use some examples. Last I heard, this may have changed since, but Chicago Midway Airport was a pilot-controlled, uncontrolled airport. Class G airspace for a little bit. However, to mitigate that, so drones and every, it wasn't the Wild West, although if you listen on liveatc.net, it still certainly sounds like the Wild West out there. Um, they did issue a TFR. Let me actually check and see if uh, Midway is still under a TFR. I know, and Chris, maybe you can attest to this as well. Um, Chris is commenting as M08. Now he's on there. Uh, I know JFK went dark for a little bit, Chris, and I don't know what their reasoning was behind um, that. Let's see. Chicago. Midway. It's loading. Um, I'm not see in any TFR list there. I don't, it could have changed. This was kind of over the weekend now. But a lot of places that were closing were doing a TFR. I mean, Midway is still showing um, their airspace there. But uh, to be landing at that big of an airport would be uh, intriguing. I heard there was... You're showing TFR? Mm -hmm. Okay, you're still showing TFR. Mine must... I got off the Wi-Fi so I could use Wi-Fi for this instead, so it's loading slow. Um, they did a TFR, but still, there's like 172s in the pattern at Chicago Midway. Like, that's... Part of me says that's awesome, and another part of me says that is really, really dangerous for all the airliners. I think Vegas had to go dark um, as well. Yeah, uh, Chris said, NYC Center shut down. Frederick um, uh, FRG Tower uh, is closed off as of now, which is, by the way, the number... Sometimes number one, sometimes number two, busiest class Delta airport in the country. It bounces uh, between Farmingdale and Peachtree. Bounce between number one and number two for the most landings in a given year. And they're always kind of neck and neck. So Brian Pratt, our good friend, said JFK switched to a remote tower for a bit. Also New York Center. Yeah, that it, it's crazy. Las Vegas shut down. It's absolutely ridiculous times. Um, they're in, and that is because some of these controllers have uh, come up positive for the coronavirus. Um, so thus, out of precaution, everybody is quarantined, uh, including the, the tower cab and everything else. So it is crazy, crazy times that we are in um, now, my friends. That's why M0A has moved to a predominantly remote model, just the essential team hanging out here right now. And after this is done, we're all going home and working remote again tomorrow. So um, that's that. Um, any more questions that you have? Um, uh, yes. Amanda? I have had someone write in and ask if you had ever thought about starting a program to match students with instructors in their area. Office dad? I wish that was what he would do every day. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just picking on him. Would I ever offer a student uh, to match students with an instructor? While we don't have it as an official program, we do a lot of that at M0A.com. We deal with people all the time. Jason, I'm in Farmingdale. Um, I'm looking for a great instructor. First thing we do is we reach, we go into our CFI database. So we have a list of CFI partners that actually um, work with us. Um, we pay them a commission for everything they resell for us, about 30%. They sell a ground school course, we pay them 30% of whatever their students spend with us. So they don't hold any inventory, they can track their students' progress, everything else. And that's even going to get better and better in the coming months, literally. New website launches, a lot of great things coming out here soon. Um, so that continues to get better and better. We then look and say, okay, you need someone in the Farmingdale area. 
we find those types of instructors. We have Chris, who's a great remote CFI of ours out there. If he can work with you or know somebody, excuse me, he can kind of take you through um, all of that and, um, and just help with that entire process. So we are um, always trying to pair and help, although we don't really advertise it as a service. It's certainly something we, um, uh, we'd like to do a little bit more of as well. So never hesitate to reach out if you need help uh, with those. Hey, Eric, great to see you, my friend. Are you seeing Heath's question there? Heath, yes. One of the questions on my Part 107 exam today dealt with the paved checklist. Can you briefly discuss this? I don't recall it's being covered in Remote Pot 101 course. Um, Heath, I, I believe it's mentioned briefly. If you remember the I'm safe checklist, Heath, it's in that video or it's the video right after that. I'm actually in the middle of shooting version three of the remote pilot course, maybe yeah, three of the remote pilot course. So uh, I know for sure it's in version three. Version two was um, over a year ago now. So um, I'm almost positive it's there. But anyways, your question is the PAVE checklist. So in manned aviation, this has trickled down to unmanned aviation as well, we're given something called the PAVE checklist. We are all about trying to make good decisions. And they give us, the FAA gives us an acronym to help. The P in PAVE is for the pilot. How are you the pilot? Could you pass an I'm safe checklist right now? And by I'm safe, that's the checklist for you. Uh, I is for illness, M is for medication, S is for stress, A is for alcohol, F is for fatigue, E is for eaten. That's what I call it. Sometimes the FAA calls the E for emotion as well. I kind of put stress and emotion together. I changed the E for eaten. If you've ever met me, I didn't get to be six foot four by missing any meals. So I have to always eat something. Office dad can attest to that as well as he experiments with this new keto diet. He is just grumpy the entire time because he's not eating enough calories. Um, so the P in PAVE is for the pilot. The A in PAVE is for the aircraft. I take it a step further. How are you the pilot in the aircraft? In manned aviation, is this a new to you airplane? Have you been flying Cessnas and now you're flying Pipers? Or how is the aircraft from a maintenance standpoint? Is this a new to you drone? Is this your first time flying an Autel product or a DJI product? How are you, and how is the aircraft? Is it well maintained? Is it legal? Is it registered? Is it up to snuff? For the V in PAVE, we steal the V from the word environment. How is the environment? Specifically, how is the weather that day? Is the weather below your personal minimums? Is the wind really blowing? Is it, v, is it IFR when you're only legal to fly VFR? How are you the pilot in that environment? I always give the example. I was flying out in Las Vegas. We filmed a movie a few years ago called Flying Again. And um, we were flying out there and I had to do some air-to-air -air footage. And I was flying in a brand new airplane, a brand new to me airplane. It was all G1000. I didn't have a lot of time in G1000. I was in an unfamiliar environment. And I remember looking at John. John still works to us, uh, works uh, for us to this day. I said, John, if it wasn't clear and 10, meaning clear and 10 miles visibility or greater, if there was one cloud in the sky, I wouldn't go today. Because here I am, unfamiliar area, unfamiliar airport, unfamiliar avionics suite, unfamiliar airplane, there's too many odds stack against us. Add weather to that, to that equation, that's a recipe for an accident. So you see how this stacks up and compounds. And then the E is perhaps the most insidious, and it's the toughest one to deal with, because it's the toughest one to say no to. The E in PAVE is external pressures, and we all deal with external pressures. This is why in manned aviation, the commercial pilot certificate even exists. There shouldn't be a need for a commercial pilot certificate until you add money to the equation. The moment you add money, and I can think of times when I was young and I was broke and it was the end of the month, the rent was due and I could only pay my bills if that propeller was spinning. You make some dumb decisions when the rent is due, the landlord's calling, where's my rent, and I only get paid when that propeller's spinning. Yeah, the weather's not that good today, but I'm about to get kicked out and evicted from my house. Like, you fly when you probably shouldn't. External pressures like that. External pressures don't have to involve money. External pressures could be a friend going, man, when are you going to take me flying? You keep promising you're going to take me flying. External pressures in the drone space can come from a client. I needed to have that shot done yesterday. Yet the wind's blowing at 30 knots or the visibility's low or you haven't quite gotten that Lance approval to work out just yet or whatever it is and you succumb to the external pressures 
and that's when you have an accident. When something from PAVE, pilot, aircraft, environment, external pressures is out of balance, the likelihood of an accident is greater. You get all four out of balance and you really have all the ingredients you need for an accident. So phenomenal, phenomenal question. Thank you. Sorry to talk so long on that one, Amanda. I like that topic. That's okay. Um, everyone's saying that they're enjoying the humor from us at these crazy times. So keep the humor coming. We will do that. Um, someone wants to know which one you prefer to fly, 2-3 Mike Zulu or 5-1-2 Romeo? That is a uh, tough question. Um, 512 Romeo is um, is the first airplane I ever bought, so there will always be uh, a special place in my heart um, for that. Uh, the story that many people don't know on 512 Romeo, back to those external pressure days when I couldn't pay rent and everything else, um, I remember being so broke that the only thing I had was that Cessna 150, and I, here I am, a flight instructor. My only way to make money was to have an airplane. I just had an engine failure on takeoff. Ironically, the story we're talking about tomorrow. I couldn't afford the maintenance on it. I had to sell 512 Romeo and was trying to run M0A.com without an airplane for, I, I, I'd have to look back at my logbook and see. Um, and that was kind of sad for me. Um, obviously, Times much better now, growing, uh, blessed business, uh, was able to find 512 Romeo and buy it back. I relate the story to when Papa John found his original delivery car that he used to deliver pizzas in and bought that back just for the nostalgia of it. So there's always that special place in my heart with 512 Romeo. 23 Mike Zulu holds a special place in my heart as well, though. 23 Mike Zulu was my first job um, in aviation. I was flying at the time, it was 7159 Quebec, uh, and I was flying that doing traffic for a very long time. So a lot of time in that airplane. Um, they both bring uh, a, a lot of memories for me. Those, those are two airplanes I will never sell, no matter how much money you offer. So um, that's, that's kind of that. Which one do I like more? Um, if it's an IFR day, it's 23 Mike Zulu. If it's a fun little VFR day, just cruising around, 512 Romeo for sure. By the way, we're going to be changing uh, 512 Romeo's tail number uh, to 512 Mike Zulu. We're going to brand everything Mike Zulu, but keeps him the history of the 512. So uh, we're in the process of switching that over now uh, as that gets ready to head to the paint shop as well. All right. Uh, okay. Uh, how did you get the name M0A? Great question. Um, M0A stands for Mach Zero Aviation. So the story is, I see Adam and a few others um, uh, chiming in uh, on that who've heard the story a million times. Um, the story was I always wanted to be a military pilot. At the time, it was the F-15E. That was the very cool airplane. I did four years of ROTC in high school. I took the ASVAB test. It's about the only thing I ever passed in high school. And just was working towards that. Already had my private pilot. I am going to be a military aviator. Talked to the recruiter. Everything was going great. And then all of a sudden, it was time to meet the recruiter in person. Went to meet the recruiter and um, went there. And he said, as soon as I walked in the door, he said, Jason, I am so sorry. So what, what happened? What's wrong here? I never asked you how tall you were. He goes, I think you're going to be too tall to, to fly really anything fast. Because uh, they measure your seated height. So it's torso height and the length of your legs as well. My torso is fine. My legs were too long. I'm six foot four. And you, can, you could be anywhere. There's no like, you can't be taller than six one. Because it's actually your sitting height. You could, you could be six one. But if you have a shorter torso and longer legs, it could work out. But at six four, my legs were too long. Uh, they'd actually hit underneath the instrument panel if I ever had to eject. Uh, and that would, not, uh, that would not end well. So the story goes, um, he said to me, you'll be flying Mach 0 the rest of your life when I wanted to fly at Mach 1 in the F-15E. So uh, so that is uh, that. Joe, great to see you. Eric, great to see you. Mark said, how about Army Aviation? You know, th th there is an intrigued helicopters for me. That is intriguing. So. We can, um, we can do it, you know, but we are so thankful. I mean, everything works out. Everything has a perfect plan uh, to be doing what we're doing now, honestly. Uh, you know, for a while I thought, I mean, I'll be an airline pilot, but that just didn't intrigue me. I love teaching. I love sharing aviation. I love creating safer, smarter pilots. So that's, um, that is what we are uh, doing with that. Jade, great to see you on here um, as well. Paul, great to see you. 
So something else that I have is that M0A has a TikTok channel oh. now. And so what I'd like to know from the community is what they want to see Jason do on our TikTok channel. Do we want it educational? Do you want to see the humor of the office? What, uh, what would you want to see? I mean, I feel like I'm showing my age. Like, I, I, I heard of TikTok. You guys have shown me a few TikToks. This is the first time in my life with social media and technology I felt old. Cause I totally, I just don't get TikTok. It doesn't, it does, I'm happy to do it. I mean, we'll, we'll find ways. If you want to be educational, you want to be funny, 50-50, uh, what do you want with that? I will figure TikTok out, but I, I, you know, I like musically a lot. I like lip syncing. You know, that's that's kind of my thing. Wayne and I had a good musically to. What was it? The Backstreet Boys? Was that what you were singing? Uh, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, Wayne. I, I think those Wayne. videos need to be found. And yeah, they exist. Yeah. Wayne and I did a. Yeah, something. Some of the Backstreet Boys. I mean, it was in sync. Bye, bye, bye. I can't remember. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, um, I need some TikTok education. Thank goodness Amanda will handle all that, and we will do something fun. Um, Let's see. Yes. Um, more questions, more comments. Again, guys, uh, let me go over the schedule, too, while, while you look for some more questions um, and comments with that. Again, apologize to everyone who was starting on YouTube. Um, I think that was an internet issue on our part. It just kept saying bitrate was too slow. We have phenomenal internet when the whole world's not quarantined and bogging it down. Um, so we'll see what we can do about um, about that. The fiber internet companies are, are booming right now because everyone else has the same problem. Our schedule, tomorrow. Tomorrow are two videos uh, for m0a.com. We are posting our, I have it, let me pull up your email, Amanda. We are posting uh, American Airlines Flight 965 posts tomorrow. Um, I've done this before, I did it for Oshkosh, if you watch that live. It's actually titled the most important video you'll watch this year, or will make this year, I believe, we posted last year. Um, I want you to watch it again, though, uh, and from a different perspective. American Airlines 965, that'll post tomorrow. That just, again, goes to show you professional pilots make mistakes, too. So watch that from the attitude of where could we have broken this chain of events? Where did crew resource management break down? For my remote pilot team, we'll be doing, actually, Missouri Office Dad is making a great appearance, doing his, why'd you give me that dirty look? What is this? This is your video tomorrow, oh. the, Lan the Lance authorization video. Okay. He's getting, did you see that look he gave me? That was a that really was intense. That was a really tense look. Like, what's Jason doing now? Um, uh, office Dad, Emsbury Office Dad, follow him on Instagram. Um, is, and um, Facebook. And Facebook. Wow, is Emsbury Office Dad Facebook? There is. Wow, I'm, I'm not aware of this. This is great. <laughs> I will start tagging you in everything. Um, so, um, I lost my track. I'm <laughs> sorry. I, I, you need to see his profile picture. His profile picture is sitting at my desk with a Jason Shepard name tag with his feet up on the desk, just like living large. Oh, it, yeah. It's good. Um, tomorrow's video for Remote Pilot is a Lance authorization and that process to go through that. That'll be on the M0A YouTube and Facebook, and of course the Remote Pilot YouTube and Facebook. There is a uh, member only webinar. Oops, we put 1 p.m. in there. It needs to be 2 p.m. We'll update that tomorrow. It's not a problem. Um, Starting at 2 p.m. tomorrow, that's my fault. I had it in the wrong time on Team Up to begin with. Okay. Um, 2 p.m., I'm talking about this is a members only webinar. So go to m0atrial.com, M Z E R O A trial.com if you want to take a trial and check all this out. I'll be talking more about my engine failure on takeoff and 512 Romeo at 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. At 3 p.m., I'll be talking an IFR topic, sharing about an IFR accent as well. Um, on Wednesday, we post our CFI podcast. Remember, uh, from this desk, we produce four podcasts every single month. The Private Pilot Podcast, the Instrument Pilot Podcast, the Commercial Pilot Podcast, and the CFI Podcast. You can check all that out by searching M0A or any of those titles on iTunes to find all of those. I'll be taking a deeper dive into what happened behind the scenes of American 965. Then, also on Wednesday at 11, mm -hmm. Wednesday at 11, I'll be right back here uh, doing another live chat. It just says live chat with Jason. So so any questions you all have, uh, now is your chance to uh, ask um, all those questions as well. If you have some more, you can send them to Amanda. If we miss any Amanda, uh, we can take those questions as well. But I'll be back here live, 11 a.m. Eastern Time, uh, right here on the Missouri Facebook and hopefully YouTube as well, assuming the internet's going better. Thursday, I'm doing a public webinar. Again, excuse me, <coughs> again on the M0A 
Facebook and YouTube. I'll do my best to get it on the remote pilot uh, as well. Um, I'm doing a remote pilot first at 2 p.m. I'm talking about the state of part 107. A lot of stuff we've talked about here today, I'm talking more about remote ID, what's happening with that, how drones are working to fight the coronavirus, just some great drone updates. That's live at 2 p.m. Eastern Time on the Remote Pilot 101 YouTube and Facebook. Then at 3 p.m. Eastern Time on the M0A uh, YouTube and Facebook, I'll be going live, this is going to be a big one, showing again my JFK Jr. recreation. All new content, all new animation, all new insight. Did you know that JFK Jr.'s um, radio was just one digit off the appropriate frequency for picking up any flight following services? All these sort of things we're going to share, talk about, and dive more into. So that's kind of our week. And then Friday, we get a little bit of a break. I'll be working remotely all week with the exception of coming in for these live streams for you all as well. So just some super stuff. Uh, Amanda, why don't we take one more question and then we will save all the other questions uh, for um, on Wednesday. We can answer some of those then as well. All right, let me see. Can you tell us about your time at JU? Oh, super. Who asked that? Uh, that was Chad. Hey, Chad. Um, yep, uh, so I, uh, many people actually don't know this. I am actually a, uh, a three-time college dropout. Uh, people don't realize that. I did a stint at Bridgewater State College, uh, and I did a stint at Jacksonville University, both uh, phenomenal establishments. This was not, uh, it was not their issue. It was my issue. I, um, I loved the aviation stuff. But I hated calculus. I hated math. I hated going to English class, everything else. I just wanted to fly. I did so well in all my aviation classes and was taking flight lessons when I should have been taking calculus tutoring instead. Um, apparently a D was failing, by the way, in calculus. I thought a D was barely passing, an F was failing. But did you know that, Wayne, a D is failing? Anything yeah. below 2.0? <laughs> I didn't know that. Uh, actually, to take that story further, in high school, uh, about six months out from graduation, I had a 1.8 GPA. And you want to hear the funny story, I had a 1.8 GPA, and the guidance counselor said, we have to bring this GPA up, GPA up Jason, or you're not going to be able to walk. So they signed me up for a class called TV production. And I went into TV production, and I was the on-camera, I did all the morning announcements, and all the teleprompter, and all the cameras, and that's like how all this kind of started in a way. Huh. Um, so I did TV production class while I was learning to fly, and just started kind of putting all those things together. That's how I graduated, because TV production, they said, it's an easy A, just go there and don't mess up. And I fell in love with the production. Awesome guidance counselor. That. Yeah, yeah, the awesome <laughs> guidance counselor is right. So, um, but to answer your question, Chad, JU is a phenomenal institution, a little bit expensive, because um, it's private, but uh, a phenomenal um, institution as well. And um, we're working on some kind of neat uh, collegiate uh, partnerships in the near future, hopefully. I mean, they're very long deal cycles, uh, but hopefully I can share more about those um, in the near future as well with that. But why don't we wrap on that? Because we said we're going to run about an hour. Um, let's wrap on that note. And Amanda, I'll let you watch for any more questions that uh, kind of come on in. Uh, this will be up on Facebook. I don't know what happened to YouTube. Maybe we can download this from there and upload it to YouTube so everyone can know. We'll work on YouTube next time if you'd rather watch that there. Thank you for taking time uh, out of your busy day. <laughs> Wayne's throwing stuff at me. Uh, just to watch this, I know many of you, um, these are crazy, crazy times. Like Tyler mentioned earlier, having to shut down their businesses. I know sales are down for others. I know many other business owners who are struggling during these times. If I could offer any encouragement is this. Once again, the same thing we opened with. In every adversity, there's a seed of a greater or an equivalent advantage. You may not know what it is now, but it is out there. And uh, if you start looking at it and looking from the mindset of where is the opportunity in all of this, I promise it will jump out to you. Obviously, uh, you know, I have a bias hoping that opportunity is to, you know, let's work on the written test. Let's pursue that next certificate. Let's take more time for the ground studies. But um, honestly, maybe that opportunity is, Jason, I need to turn that membership off for now, save some money and go and, and study on my own, whatever that is. We are here to be a blessing to you all. Um, yes, we're a business and we wish to make money, but more importantly, um, you all, 
the Emissary family truly come first. And I mean that, and I hope that message comes through in every single thing we do, that you all come before prophets. This team here comes before prophets. Um, we are here to serve you all. So if there's anything, anything at all we can do during these trying times, um, we are here for you. We are here for you in the good times. We are here for you in the trying times as well. So thank you for being a blessing to our business. It's our turn to be a blessing to you all. I will see you all live uh, tomorrow, um, hopefully on the member-only webinar, plus some great videos. If not, I'll see you all Wednesday, Thursday. I'll be seeing you all a lot this week. Have a wonderful rest of your day. And most importantly, remember, but a good pilot is always learning. Have a great day, guys. We'll see you. Bye.